Hey there, how's it going everyone? In the previous video, we went ahead and created our note model that would define how our data for each note is going to be in our database. So we also associated each note to a given user and used Django's default user model. In this tutorial, we're going to be able to build a login and register functionality so that users can be able to sign up to get accounts and be able to also log in into our application. Now to do this, we're going to use Django's default authentication functionality. This helps us to create users, helps us to also manage users. For example, things like changing passwords, uh, resetting passwords, logging in and logging out. So we're going to do those in this video. Now to start, I'm going to go to the project, the notes URL. So I'm going to go to notes urls.py and I'm going to import Django's authentication views. So to do this, I'm going to to come to the top here and say import Django dot contrib dot auth dot views as auth views. So we're going to call this auth views. Now from this auth views, we're going to get different view functions or view class based functions that are going to help us to to carry out such functions such as logging in and logging out of users. So the first, the first function that we are going to take care of is the logging in function. So as we see, we already have our login URL and we associated this with a view function for logging in. However, we're going to replace this with a view function that comes from Django. So we're going to be able to remove this. So we're going to remove views.login and replace it with both views dot login view. So this is a class-based function. Um, and when we use this class-based view function, uh, we use the dot as view, dot as view method. So as to specify that this is going to be a view function. So then we have to also specify the template that we're going to use. And in this case, we're going to use the template that we specified for the login view function. So when I go to views within our notes app, I'm going to go to login. And this view function, the function based view, is returning a not login template. So we're going to remove this. I'm going to cut it. And for the rest of this, I'm going to just remove them. Now I'm going to save my views and then go back to our urls.py. So within our urls.py, within the as view method, we can specify the template name that we're going to give to this class based view. So we can say template name, if I'm doing a mistake, so I'll go within dot as view, then I say template name. So in this case, the template name is going to be, uh, we're going to say this is going to be not slash login dot HTML. So we're going to save. And when we go back to our project, uh, we now register now our login in route. So we're going to go to login. We see that our template is being rendered. So the truth is this is not going to work as expected because the login view always uh, the default login view within Django brings with it a form that can help us to validate data as well as to bring in fresh messages. So we're going to go ahead and fix this. So I'm going to go back to our login.html, the one that's going to be rendered. So we're going to go to templates and we're going to go to notes, login.html. So we're going to change a few things here. What we're going to change is the form. So instead of rendering a plain HTML form, we're going to use a Django form that comes with our view. So we're going to remove this. So remove these fields. And the first thing we'd like is to protect our form with a CSRF token. And that is a cross-site request for Jerry token that help that helps us to protect our forms from submitting data to external parties. So we're going to do that by saying CRS CSRF. And this is going to generate a CRF token for our form. Now when that is done, we're also going to create the form by saying form. So we're going to create a variable for form. And then we're also going to use Let's first render the form. So after rendering the form, we're going to save. Uh, when I go back, 
going to refresh and we are having our form which is like this so we see that our form is not appearing like the way we want we're going to be able to install another tool called Django crispy forms that helps us to work with our forms beautifully now remember that our ui is using bootstrap uh, when our UI is using Bootstrap, we can beautify our forms with Django Crispy Forms and can be able to do specific settings that show that this form is working with Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, I'm going to first stop our server. I'm going to stop the server with Ctrl C. And when I stop the server, I'm going to install Django Crispy Forms. So I'm going to do pip install Django crispy forms and this is going to install Django crispy forms within our virtual environment now after installing this we are going to also freeze it within our requirements.txt so i'm going to send this to requirements.txt So all these requirements have been written there. So after that, the next thing is going to be to set up our crispy form. So I'm going to run the server again. So I'm going to say Python money.py run server. So after running this, I am going to, to go to my project. Now, when I go to that project, I'll have access to setting.py and I'm going to add crispy forms. So I'm going to come and Put crispy forms. So I'm going to add crispy crispy forms in our in our installed apps. The next thing will also be to set up our crispy forms to be able to work with Bootstrap. So I'm going to go to the bottom of our application. And I'm going to add a setting that is going to be called crispy template pack. So I'll specify that this is going to be bootstrap, or oh, it's going to be in lowercase, so it's going to be boot, bootstrap four. So we're going to save this, and when we go back to our template for loading in, we'll add a special tag that is going to introduce the crispy form tags. So to do that, we're going to come below the extend space to HTML, and you're going to say that load, Going to add load and then we're going to say crispy forms tags so we're going to save this and the next thing we also like is to add a filter for showing that crispy form should work with our form then we're going to say crispy and when we save this we're going to go back to our app at localhost 8000 login then we refresh and we see that our form is now being displayed beautifully. So we're going to go ahead and also work on the register form. So for the register form, we're going to use the default user creation form that comes within our Django framework. So we're going to go back to our code and within our code, we're going to create, um, we're going to import the Django view, the Django user registration view. So from that, we're going to come we're going to be actually using our register view. So when I come, I'm going to import the, the, the form. So we don't need this. So I'm going to remove this. So I'm going to import it by saying from Django dot contrib dot auth dot forms. We are going to import the user creation form. And after importing this, we are going to make use of this. So I'm going to go within our register, within our register view, and I'm going to say that the form that we're going to use is going to be the user creation form. So we create our form and we put it in the instance of our user creation form. Now I'm also going to be able to create a context. So a context gives a definition of all the external variables that we may use in our templates. For example, let me go ahead and create one. So I'm going to create a context and it's going to be a dictionary. So that context is going to have our form and that form is going to be the instance of our user creation form. Now, the next thing will be adding our context to our render function. So I'm going to say it's going to be context 
and once I add our context, I'll go to the register template. So I'm going to close this open editor. So I'm going to close this for a moment. So I'm going to close this for the moment. And after closing them, I'm going to go to my template for registration. So I'm going to go to templates and register.html. So I'm going to remove all of these fields. Now I'm going to remove all of these fields. So going to get rid of all this except the submit button so after removing those fields I'll do the same thing just like we did for the login for the login template so a lot um, crispy form stacks so means say crispy forms tags and after doing that I'm going to Let's protect our form with a CRS, CSRF token. So I'm going to say CRF token. And after doing that, the next thing is going to be to, to add the form. So we're going to say form and we're going to filter it with the crispy. So we're going to create a crispy filter. And after doing this filter, we're going to save. Now, when we go back to our register route, so when we create our register route, we see that our form is being rendered. So we have a username, a password, and a password confirmation, which is beautiful. So for now, we are having a fully functional sign-up form that also has some validation on it. So let's work on the functionality for saving our user. So we're going to go back to our visual type within our register view function. And what we're going to do is to specify that if the if the method is post so we're going to say if request dot method is equal to post now what we're going to do is say that our form is going to be equal to uh, the user creation form but in this case, we want it to carry data for the post method. So we need to say request dot post. What this line does is to specify that um, this refers to the form with the post data, the data that is sent with the form on sending data with the post method. So after doing this, we are going to check if the form is valid. So we're going to write an if statement. So if if form dot is valid if the form is valid and the request method is equal to post all we want to do is to save this user so we are going to save this user by saying form dot save now this saves the user and after saving the user what we want is to redirect so we're going to import another shortcut called redirect so i'm going to go to jungle the shortcuts the shortcuts so we're going to import redirect and after importing redirect we after doing form so we're going to say return it's going to redirect to what you want to do, redirect to is the login so we are going to redirect to nuts login so after doing this we would also want to give a notification that our user has been created so we're going to use Django's authentication Django's default messaging framework so we're going to go ahead and import that so I'm going to go and say from Django dot contrib we are going to import uh, from Django dot contrib we're going to import the messages so messages is the helps us to flash messages to show that a given action has been done. So after doing this, we're going to before we re redirect, we'd like to flash a message to the user that informs them that their account has been created successfully. Now all you're going to do is say that messages. Then we can specify the type of messages we are sending. So in this case, it's going to be a success message. And when the success message is sent, what we're going to do in this case is to put in the request. So we're going to specify the request and then the message you'd like to send. So the message in this case is going to be count created successfully.
So let's fix this. So this is going to be a comma. Once you do that, set. So to render these messages, we are going to go to our to our templates and add these messages so as to be displayed on the front end. So I'm going to go to the login.html. So I'm going to go to login.html, login.html, and slightly above the login, I'm going to add that. So I'm going to use an if statement within Django's templating language. So we're going to say if I'm using gen Genero to do this auto completion. So I'm going to say if um, if messages, then we're going to say we're going to look over the messages. So we're going to say see. So this is going to be for message in messages. We would like to create a paragraph that returns these messages. So I'm going to create a paragraph, and this paragraph is going to have the message. Now we can also give this a class. So, so we're going to add a class of alert, and this is going to be alert. Then we can also use Django's templating language to get this, get the type of alert we want. So I'm mean going to say this is going to be message dot types. So let's see this in action. So I'm going to save, hoping that our server is still running. When we go back to our application. When we go back to our application, we are going to try to sign up. So I'm going to try to refresh this first. Then let's sign up with our user. So we're going to say test user, let's create a test user, and give them a password. So we're going to give them a password and another password. So let's try to, to register. This is logging in. Let's try to fix this. So I'm going to go back to our register. So we're going to change this value to sign up. So this is going to be sign up. So when you go and refresh, we have changed. So let's try to feed in our data. So we set as user. We create our password. So we're going to say passwords and then we add other passwords. Now when you save this. Uh, we see no reverse match for register, so let's try to see this. So this is not, so it has failed to redirect. I think we have a mistake. So this is not, should be not, because we are in our notes application. See if our server is running. Yeah, it's running. So if we go and refresh, continue resubmitting the form, we see that a user with this username already exists. Now the beauty with using Django's user creation form is that we get some validation out of the box. For example, when we feed in a username that was already existing, we see that a user with this username already exists. So let's go ahead and try to add in a user with other usernames. So we add test user123 and we put in a password. So let's put a simple password and we confirm that. So when you try to sign up, we see that the user account has been created. So uh, this is returning two messages because we've done this request two times. However, it would have returned it once. So let's try logging in with the user we created. So if I add test user 123 and we log in. So this is going to redirect to account slash profiles. However, we can be able to tell Django the route to redirect to in case we log in. So I'm going to do this by going through our project setting to apply. So I'm going to close this for now. And we're going to go to our project settings .py. And below here, we're going to say login. We're going to first specify that our login URL is going to be the slash login. So this is going to be slash login. Now the next thing we just want to do is to specify that our login redirects URL. So that is the Login is supposed to redirect to in case we log in. So we're going to say login redirect URL is going to be equal to that. So it's going to be slash. So when you log in, all we want to do is to redirect to our index route. So we're going to save, hoping our server is still running. So let's try logging in again. So we're going to go to login and test user one, two, three, and we add in our password. Now, this is going to redirect to, so we see that 
we are being provided with some authentication because the user, the, the password we entered is incorrect. So let's try to minimize that and enter. We're going to log in again. So I put the password and seems you're having the same error. So let me use password. Try to log in again. So seems like I was having caps lock on. So let's try logging in. So this case we are redirected to our index, which means we have logged in. If you're to notice, we are still having this template being rendered as though we are still not logged in. So to fix this, we're going to use Django's user request user. So Django in most cases keeps the user object that has logged in within our request. So to do that, we're going to access the user from request.user. So we're going to be able to display that in our template. So I'm going to pull up our base template. I'm going to go to notes and templates and go to the base HTML file. Now within this base HTML is where we have our navbar. So we're going to customize our navbar so that it shows that a user is logged in and shows them options for logging out. So to do that, I'm going to remove these links and write an if statement. So we're going to say if then user. So the user is the user that the user object that is stored within our request object uh, of the user that's logged in at that particular instance. So we're going to say that if user dot is authenticated, so this is going to be user dot is authenticated. Now if the user is authenticated, we'd like to display some URL. So let us write also an else statement. So I'm going to write an else statement here. Now when we write this else statement, that's why I'm going to paste these URLs. I'm going to paste the same URLs here. So I'm going to paste them here. So after pasting them here, I'm going to save. So I'm going to change this. So this is going to be not the index. However, we do not want them to register again when they log in. So we're going to call this uh, add, add notes. So I'm going to call this add, add notes. And we're also going to remove this. So I'm going to remove this. And for now, let's leave it blank. Now, this is going to be logout, which we're going to implement in a second. And we're also going to say that this is going to be the logout link. Now, um, we're going to leave this as it is for now. So let's go and check this out. So when you go to our, to our so we're seeing that reverse for logout is not found. So we're going to create that. So we're going to go to our app URLs. So we need to go to app URLs, which is in notes URLs. And the next thing I'm going to do is to, to create the logout path. So I'm going to come and say, so all I'm going to go is to copy this and I'm going to create one. However, in this case, I'm going to say that this is going to be a login. Let me first fix this. I'm going to fix that and call this logout. This is going to be our logout URLs. Now the next thing I'm also going to do is to specify that this is going to be the logout view function. So this is going to be both views dot. It's going to be logout view dot as view then you can also specify that the template in this case is going to be so when you go to our templates notes we have our log so let's see this is logged out dot html so we're going to change this to logged out dot html and the name is going to be login now if i save um what we want is when you log out we want to redirect to the HTML. So we can specify that this, we have specified that our logout template is going to be this. So when we log out, we are redirected to this template. Now let's try seeing this in action. So we enable and refresh. Let's see. That's for logout. So this is not logout. So we are not having this. Let's see. 
you also need to give this a name of logout so that's why it's returning the error so we're going to fix this by adding the logout so i'm going to save and when you refresh we're seeing that our logout has been done now also going to change this so instead of displaying actually what we would have done is to redirect to our home instead of our index route which was a mistake i did so we need to go back to our views and instead of uh, redirecting to re instead of redirecting to our to our <coughs> instead of redirecting to our index on login we're going to redirect to the home so we have a node template that's supposed to redirect to so i'm going to fix that in a second so we're going to go back to our settings and we are going to change our login redirect url to slash home so we're going to call this slash home so when you go to our views.py we can be able to see that we have a home page view function so we're going to change this so let's try to log out so when you log out this trace takes us to the logged out page and when you log in again it has to redirect us to login so let's fix that so we're going to open up log our logged out to the HTML within our notes. So this is going to be logged out. I'm going to change this and replace it with URL. It's going to be URL and it's going to be notes login. So I'm going to save this and refresh. So we're going to go back here and refresh. Now when I log in again, I'm redirected to the login page. And when I <coughs> try to log in again, so this is going to be test user one, two, three, and can add in our password. So we're going to put our password here and try to log in. So this is going to redirect us to our home page. Interesting. So the next thing is we're going to be able to customize our our navbar so that it shows that we are logged in and logged out. So basically, um Let's first see, let's first check this. Now I have this, so when I go to best.html, uh, let me try to run our, our application as we had created it at first. So desktop. We try to run this, so let me open up git bash here. So we need to open up git bash here and when I open up git bash, I need first to activate the virtual environment. So we need to activate the virtual, virtual environment by saying source env. So this is going to be env Let's first see this is env scripts activate. So Let's activate that, so it's going to be scripts. Activate. Let's try to activate this. So I'm going to write source env scripts and activate. It's activating our virtual environment. Now I'm going to run this on a different port. So I'm going to say python manage.py and run server. Then we're going to specify it from local state 1000. So Let's check this. Let's first install Django. So I'm going to pick install Django. Sorry for the disorganization.
So I'm going to run this by saying Python manage.py and I'm going to run it to say run server. Then specify that the port you want to run is 8001. So this is going to run our application. So when I go to local state 8001, so let's try to see. So we having local state 8001. It's not the app we are building, so let me close this. Sorry for this disorganization. So all we want is to have All we want is to have a structure that's similar to application in demo. So I'm going to add a plus sign here. So I'm going to say plus. So this is going to be adding our notes. So when you go and refresh here, this is going to be adding our notes. And let's see if we link that to our JavaScript. So we need to link to our JavaScript. So we're going to say script source and we use we're going to use static tag. And this is going to point to where our JS is located. So this is going to be in JS. So this is going to be JS slash SCR JavaScript. So this is going to be index.js. So I'm going to save that. And after saving that, uh, I'm going to come and refresh the page. I refresh we are seeing the js file has been got which is good now the next thing is going to be to return our model so when i click we see that our model is being returned successfully beautiful now in this video let's see our logout functionality works if we try to to log in so i need to log in again with test user 123 and the password We've been able to log in. So in this video, we've been able to create a login and register, re login and register views for application using Django's default authentication view. Thanks for watching, and if you feel you've learned from this video, please go ahead and like this video, share it with someone. Thank you for watching, and see you see you in the next video.